Welcome everyone! We have recently released a chat SDK for Jetpack Compose, and today I want to show you just how easy it is to get started with our Jetpack Compose components to add in-app messaging features to your applications. We'll first start with a high-level integration which takes just a couple lines of code, and then we'll dive into some of our lower-level components for more flexibility and customization. This is based on our written Jetpack Compose chat tutorial, which you'll find in the description. Our Compose SDK is currently a beta, so be sure to send feedback our way if you have it, either on GitHub, Twitter, or right here in the comments. With that, let's jump straight into the code. Here we are in a brand new Jetpack Compose project. First, we'll open up the appmodulesbuild.gradle file to get the dependencies set up. Here, inside the dependencies block, we'll add two entries. The stream chat Compose SDK, which is currently in a beta version, and the extended set of official material icons that we'll use for customization later on. Hitting sync now, we'll make Gradle fetch these dependencies and make them available to use in our project. We can now go back to main activity and initialize the stream chat SDK. Before that, we'll just quickly remove all of the code that's added to this activity by default. As the first step, we'll initialize the chat client. We need to provide an API key here, which you'll be able to find on your stream dashboard after signing up for an account. We'll also pass in an application context. The builder allows you to customize the SDK's behavior. For example, we can set a log level here. We're simply setting this to all for the purposes of this tutorial, but be careful not to leave these logs enabled in production builds. This chat client instance gives you access to the stream API to make calls and listen to real-time events. You can call these directly yourself to perform actions in the SDK, and our other higher-level libraries also depend on it to perform network operations. Next, we'll initialize the offline support layer. The class to initialize here is called chat domain. This provides offline support, caching data in a local database, retrying failed requests automatically, and so on. It builds on top of chat client, which is why we're passing in client as the parameter to the builder. Now it's time to connect to the SDK. For this, we'll create a user object. We're using the tutorial droid ID and we're adding a name and a profile image for the user as extra data. With this ready, we can use client.connectUser to kick off the WebSocket connection to the stream API that will power our chat. We pass in the user object plus a token for authentication. In this tutorial, we're using a hard-coded development token. But in a production application, you would instead use your stream app's secret to generate real tokens on your own backend. You'll find more resources about this in our documentation. Our user is now logged in, and we can start interacting with the stream APIs. We'll do this by adding UI components, which will automatically call into the APIs to fetch data. As a first step here, we have to add a chat team wrapper, which controls styling and configuration for our Jetpack Compose UI components. All of our Compose components have to have a chat team somewhere above them in the UI tree. As you can see, you can use this theme to set light or dark mode, change colors, shapes, typography, and more. These changes will be applied to all components wrapped by the chat team. To make it easy to get started, we ship large screen components that represent entire screens of a messaging app. These are very easy to integrate, but you have some limitations on how much you can customize them. We'll use a channel screen here. We could add this without any parameters, but let's just add a few things. For example, we can set up a title, we can add an item click listener to react to the user selecting a channel, and we can add the listener for backpresses, which we'll use to exit our app here. Let's build and run now and see what we have in action. And our channel screen is loaded as we expected. You can use the search on the top to filter channels by name, and you can also browse all of the channels that are available to our currently logged in user. We also see a preview of the last message from each channel. The channel screen composable built on smaller composables in our SDK that you can also access directly. These are channel list header, search input, and channel list. Tapping on an item doesn't do anything yet. Let's implement our next screen to fix that. To add the messages screen, we're going to create a new empty activity. We'll call this messages activity and we'll skip generating a layout file as we'll be using Jetpack Compose to create the layout. Before we do that, we'll open up the manifest to set an attribute on the activity. The soft input mode attribute here will make sure that the activity's content is resized correctly whenever the keyboard is opened to write a new message. Going to the activity, we'll start by adding a companion object. This will help us do parameter handling for the activity. The getIntent method will create an intent that references the activity, and then it will place the channel ID that it received as a parameter into the intent as an extra value. 
We'll then read this extra at the start of the onCreate method when the activity starts. We also make sure that we have something to read here, and if we didn't find the channel ID, then we just close this activity. Now, to add composable UI, we'll start by calling setContent. Inside that, we'll wrap everything into a chat theme as required. We'll use another full screen composable here called Messages screen. This has a required parameter, which is the ID of the channel to load the data for. We can also look at some of the optional parameters. We could show or hide the header, change the message limit, or we could set handlers such as the backpressed handler of the activity. To launch this messages activity, we'll go back to main activity first and make a start activity call in the item click listener of channel screen. We pass in the channel's CID here as the parameter. Building and running again, we see the same channel list as before. If we click a channel, we're navigated to the messages screen. Here, we can scroll around, we can read messages, see rich content like attachments and links, reactions, and more. We can also send our own message if we want. Let's say hello world to celebrate our working application. That's it for a basic setup. You could already take these few lines of code and add messaging features to your applications. We'll now look at lower level components from the SDK, which offer you more flexibility and customization. As an example of setting custom values in chat theme, we'll go back to messages activity. As mentioned before, we can set various values here, and this time we'll add a custom shape setup. Within this, we set all corners of all messages to uniform 24 dp rounded corners. This is opposed to the default look, where one of the corners of these messages is not rounded depending on whose message it is. We're also setting the input field to have a rectangular shape. This is going to replace the rounded shape that we have by default. Another quick build, and we can see the changes in action. Heavily rounded corners, and a rectangular input field, as promised. So far, we've used screen-level components from the SDK, which are very easy to drop in, but don't offer full control over the experience. We have two other types of components which offer more customization and control. We provide bound components that communicate with view models to fetch data and perform actions, and we have completely stateless components that you can drive from the outside via their input parameters. Messages screen is built from smaller components, message list header, message list, message composer, and so on. We'll now use these components directly to build the same screen. As the first step, we'll create a view model factory. This will be able to create all necessary view model instances for a screen that displays messages. It takes a couple of parameters, a context, a chat client, and a chat domain, and importantly, a channel ID to know what channel to access data from. We'll now grab three view models from this factory. List view model is responsible for loading the list of messages in the channel. Composer view model will handle user input for us. And attachment speaker view model will handle the state of the attachment selection dialog, such as the currently selected files. We'll now build our own UI using these view models to back it. Let's put this into a separate composable function called myCustomUI. Here, we'll fetch some values from the view models first. We want to know the following, whether the attachments view model is currently showing its overlay, whether we have a selected message in the list, and who our currently logged in user is. In our screen's layout, we'll have a box at the top level, which will let us overlay things on top of the main content of the screen. That main content will live inside a scaffold. Placing content in the box but after the scaffold will display it on top. The scaffold is a material component that lets us have a content in the middle of the screen and optional top and bottom bars that surround it. Here we'll skip the top bar and use just the bottom bar. That's where we're placing a message composer, providing it its view model to store state and whenever the attachments icon in it is clicked, we'll notify the attachment speaker view model about it so that it can update its own state. As the content, we're placing a message list component utilizing the list view model. Whenever a thread is clicked, we notify the composer view model as well, as it needs to have slightly different UI and behavior when sending a message inside of a thread. Now, inside the box and after the scaffold, we can add two overlays that show up on top of the main content. First, if we are currently supposed to be showing attachments, we'll add a attachment speaker component. This uses its own view model to store state about what attachments are selected and whenever we confirm the selection, it will communicate with the composer's view model. The second overlay to add here is for the currently selected messages actions. We'll display this only if we have a currently selected message. The selected message overlay component 
will show a list of message options that will depend on the contents of the message, our current user, and whether we're in a thread. If one of those actions is triggered, we'll propagate it into the list and the composer's view models. That's what it takes to build a messages screen yourself, about 50 lines of code to replace the single messages screen call. However, you now have a lot more control over the exact behavior, and you can insert your own composable content and logic easily. We can run the app again, and we'll see something very similar to what we had before. Again, we have a rich message list in the middle. On the top, we no longer have the header that we used to have. And on the bottom, we have a working composer component. We can open the attachment speaker. We can select attachments in there. And when we do that, they get added to the message correctly. Long tapping a message displays the available options, which we can use to, for example, leave reactions on the message. As one last customization step, we'll now modify what the message composer looks like. We'll still use the component itself, we'll just use some of its parameters to adjust it. We don't want to insert all this code in line here, so we'll move it into a separate function that we call myCustomComposer. Here's the entire code of this custom composer. It's a bunch of lines, but the contents are actually quite simple. We are setting up some basic modifiers at the top, we're giving it a view model to store its state. We're removing all integrations from the composer here. Integrations are UI elements that appear on the left-hand side of the composer, Setting this to an empty composable lambda simply clears this and removes the attachment button that was there by default. Next, we'll customize the middle of the composer, the input. We're again using a component from the SDK here, message input, and just adding customization using its parameters. We set some modifiers, and we make sure that it displays and adjusts the current value as the user is typing. It also observes the selected attachment and actions in the view model. Whenever the attachment is removed from it, it will notify the view model. The main customization we want to perform is changing the label of the message input. By default, the label is a simple text that shows send message. We can add any composable function here, however. For example, we're now adding a row that contains an icon and a text next to each other. If we run this code, we'll see these changes to the composer in action. As you can see, the integrations have been removed, and the label is now a keyboard icon along with the text type something. If we click in there, we can start typing away in the chat, as usual. That's it for today. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and learned something. If you did, do all of the YouTube things, like the video, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and leave us a comment telling us what you think of Jetpack Compose and our Compose Chat SDK. In the description, you'll find useful resources to get started, such as the Compose Chat tutorial, our full documentation for our Compose components, and a link to our GitHub repository, which contains the source code and a sample application that's built on the components. While you're there, if you like the project, be sure to also start a repo. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.